as soon as you add lyrics to a song or to a piece of music, uh, I think most people's ear automatically focuses on that. Particularly in the act of creating music, you're filtering a huge range of influences down into a moment in time. I do really, really miss gigs and I can't, can't wait to go back. I think the way that I'm going to see them and value them has changed. Captured spirits. Yeah. What does this album represent? A very direct reading of the album title would be to do with the, we have possibly experiences of our ancestors coded into our DNA in a way that affects our behavior and our um, sort of innate abilities and, and thinking patterns and things like this, um, much more than we thought. In psychology, there's always been, you know, an idea of whether humans are a, like a tabula rasa or a preset thing waiting to happen. And uh, I think it's an interesting mix of the two in the end that we are. My dad is, um, well, me and Nick actually, both both of us, obviously my, my brother who plays the piano. Um, our, our dad is Scottish and English, half and half. My mum's family is um, Cypriot. So they uh, moved to England when Turkey invaded Northern Cyprus um, mm. and have lived here since in London. That, that family lineage is more interesting to, to, well, it's easier to trace because uh, we still have some family in Greece and scattered around Greece. And also some, most of her friends and immediate family were here in London. But it's hard to say what you take from that. I mean, it's probably on a, on a level that's hard to articulate those types of things, I imagine. Um, that particular side of the family is, uh, oh, my mum is a, is a first generation immigrant then from a, a Greek country. This is obviously a story there of having to flee their homeland. Um, but yeah, I, um, I think maybe what we all have from them is yeah, yeah. something difficult to articulate. It's what makes us us. While we were writing this album, I was reading a lot of Jung and uh, his ideas particularly cross over into an artistic realm and a creative realm very strongly because it's, uh, it's an attempt to explain the, the origin of ideas that come to us that aren't necessarily originated in our own head, our own ego, whatever you'd like to call it. I find it a very interesting uh, way of um, thinking about creative work and, and where ideas come from. And, Things like this. I mean, on a more direct level, particularly in the act of creating music, you're filtering a huge range of influences down into a moment in time. Obviously with music, you've got a mix of influences, which I think are part psychological, part mood-based and emotion-based and part um, technical, how you play your instrument, uh, what music you've, you've listened to, you've been listening to recently, what you've been studying, all of these things. And I think one of the things uh, with, with our band is we try and keep, uh, and particularly for the writing of this album, we try and keep the writing process very organic and very free from preconceived ideas of what we want the music to turn out. We particularly stay well away from thinking it's going to come out as this genre. Even, even on a track by track basis, we let things develop organically, whether they take a day, whether they take three or four months to finish. Um, it, I think it kind of filters through in the approach, uh, the approach to composition in the, in the band. images of saxophone is the guy at the front blazing you know doing crazy crazy solos and showing Very off glamorous. yeah <laughs> and um part of that is appealing i think to some people but it didn't really appeal to me 
it's kind of like you know the lead guitarist the the shredding thing none of that ever really appealed to me in, in a musical sense but what did appeal to me was um people who were using the saxophone in a way that was compositionally interesting and and used the tonal abilities and flexibility of the instrument because it's got a massive tonal range i think it's a hugely flexible instrument compositionally and i think it can also express a, a lot of different emotions if you if you work on certain th things in your playing your technique you know it can range from anything from super quiet and pure to completely unhinged you know coltrane late era Bond. stuff it's yeah and um i think that drew me to it There's definitely a refocusing on not just saxophone, but I think generally some of those jazz instruments, maybe maybe more saxophone than others, but to me it looks like people are trying to put them in a slightly different light. So people are trying to place them in different compositional setups. They're not doing the traditional, everyone plays the melody, so everyone solos, everyone plays the melody again thing. They're trying to place them in these interesting places. And I think that's been going on for a long time if you've been if you've been listening and you've been looking out for what's going on yeah. but it's i think you're right it's coming back into the spotlight yeah. again now i, I love words and i love poetry and lyrics but for me i think there's a purity to instrumental music that I think is as soon as you add lyrics uh, to a song or to a piece of music uh, I think most people's ear automatically focuses on that it gets you know 70-80% of their attention and to me that detracts from the rest of what's going on um, in a way that I didn't really want to pursue I think there's there's you know the, the brain focuses on language and focuses on speech as an important thing i think and it, it must be an evolutionary thing but it's the same happens in music it hones in on the the words and the lyrics i think if you leave that out it means that the listener is more able to listen to the whole What would you describe the year 2020 for yourself? Um, <laughs> Why I don't are you to... laughing? I mean, uh, well, it's best it's year ever. Possible question. Best, I think it's been the most extreme year of my adult life. Um, it's been interesting. I, I've had this conversation with a lot of people because I think it's it, the, the main outcome of this has been uh, reflection. People having time to think about their lives and to reflect on what's important to them and what's been going well for them and what hasn't. Um, I think for musicians and for people who work in the events industry, it's tricky because you, um, you're you working in a field where you love your work. Yeah. So as soon as it's forcibly not there, it's, it's a very emotional split. And it also, I think, takes away from a lot of time and effort you've invented, you've invested into something that is effectively a, a huge part of you and your personality and your day-to-day -day life that's n I think not necessarily a bad thing in a way because sometimes having the brakes put on forcibly is what you need I was touring since I was about um, 21 22 I think um, with Mammal Hands with Matthew Halsall's band um, a little with uh, Sunder Arc and a, f a few other projects over the years so most of my adult life has been revolving around gigging and touring. And I think uh, it's been quite eye-opening to stop for a little bit. I, w I wouldn't have done it otherwise. I don't think a lot of other musicians would have done it otherwise. Um, and I, I do really, really miss gigs and I can't, can't wait to go back. But um, I think the way that I'm going to see them and value them has changed um, yeah. for, for certain. Um, yeah. I do think people will, after this, be really in need of, of that um, 
that collective energy that that comes from a from a concert from a gig everybody in the room together feeling the same thing i think that's what's missing here yeah, yeah, yeah. at these times when it feels like everything is happening at once i think it's the time when music is most and and art and art is most needed definitely